Good morning, beloved St. Barts. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. It's so good to gather together with you to worship, beloved. We are about to meet the God of the universe. Let's take a moment of silent prayer as we prepare our hearts. Let us pray. Amen. Let's join our voices together in our opening song. of the scorn of the indolent rich and of derision of the proud. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning is now and will be forever. Amen. The Gospel according to Matthew, the 25th chapter, starting at the 14th verse. Jesus said, for it is as if a man, going on a journey, summoned his slaves and entrusted his property to them. 
To one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one. To each according to his ability. Then he went away. The one who had received the five talents went off at once and traded with him. And made five more talents. In the same way, the one with two talents made two more talents. But the one who had received one talent went off and dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those slaves came and settled accounts with them. Then the one who had received five talents came forward, bringing five more talents, saying, Master, you handed over to me five talents. See, I have made five more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. And the one with two talents also came forward, saying, Master, you handed over to me two talents. See, I have made two more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy with few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. Then the one who had received one talent also came forward, saying, Master, I knew that you were a harsh man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you did not scatter seed. So I was afraid. And I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here you have what is yours. But his master replied, you wicked and lazy slave. You knew, did you, that I reap? where I did not sow, and gather where I do not scatter? Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers. And on my return, I would have received what was my own with interest. So take the talent from him, and give it to the one with ten talents. For to all those who have, more will be given. And they will have an abundance, but for those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. As for this worthless slave, throw him into outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, Holy Spirit, may I only speak what you desire me to speak. Lord, Holy Spirit, may we only hear and do what you desire us to do. Amen. You and I are invited to show the Lord our goodness and trustworthiness so that we can enter into his joy. I believe that's the heart of today's parable, beloved, that Jesus tells in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 25. Uh, this parable comes in a string of parables or stories that Jesus tells. And he begins this string of parables or stories by saying, the kingdom of heaven will be like this. And then he goes on to tell the story of a man going on a journey who summons his slaves or servants uh, and entrusts his property to them, and he divides up the property. And I just want to name the fact that the end of this parable reads very harsh with what happens to the third servant who has the one talent. And what I want to suggest to you, beloved, is we can't only hear the second half of this parable. Because the first half of this parable has so many life-giving and positive things to say. It, it says that God wants to give the members of his kingdom resources. He wants to acknowledge their goodness and trustworthiness so that they can enter into his joy. So I want you to hear that Jesus is actually painting a beautiful, positive picture of his kingdom. 
It does have some truthful realities to it. But that God's desire and God's heart for each of us is beautiful and generous. So what's going on in this parable? Well, it says that a man, the kingdom of heaven is as if a man going on a journey summons his slaves and entrusts his property to them. To one he gives five talents, to another two, and to another one, to each according to his ability. And that is such an important word for you and I to understand what the kingdom of heaven works like, how God works. Is that he gives resources to you and I, skills, talents, gifts, finances, relationships, our homes, the places that we live, whatever the resources that we know that we have received from God, that He gives those to us according to our ability. And He doesn't demand from us more than we are capable of. He didn't demand from the servant He gave five talents more than they were capable of. He didn't demand from the servant He gave two talents more than they were capable of. And he didn't demand from the servant he gave one talent more than they were capable of. And he doesn't ask of you and I more than we are capable of. God knows us. God understands us. And he gives us each according to our ability, according to Jesus. And the parable continues, the one who had received the five talents went off at once, traded with them, and made five more talents. There's a key word here about what a good and trustworthy servant is like. At once. God gives this servant resources, and it says that at once, and immediately, they went and began working with what God had given them. And the invitation for you and I is that we would immediately begin working with what God has given us according to our ability and that we would do it for His kingdom. Because the invitation is to use what God has given us according to our ability for His kingdom. And the parable says that that servant went on at once and traded with them and made five more talents in the same way the one who had two talents made two more talents, but the one who received one talent went off and dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those slaves came and settled accounts with them. Then the one who had received the five talents came forward, bringing five more, saying, Master, you handed over to me five talents. See, I have made five more talents. His master said, Well done. Good trustworthy servant. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. Now think about this for just a minute, beloved. This is a description of what the kingdom of heaven is like. And what Jesus says is that when we are good and faithful with what God has given each of us, God actually desires to put us in charge of places and things in His kingdom. That is mind-boggling to me. God wants us to partner with Him to be in charge of things in His kingdom. What an incredible invitation to partnership. And that when we're good and trustworthy with what God has given us, We'll enter into his joy. And, and the same response is what the servant who had the two talents is told as well. And we get to the, the servant with the one talent, and it changes really drastically. The one who had received the one talent also came forward saying, Master, I knew you were a harsh man, reaping where you do not sow, and gathering where you do not scatter seed. So I was afraid. And I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here is what is yours. This servant didn't do anything 
with what the master gave them. And notice the difference between how the servant describes the master and what motivated the servant to behave the way they did and how the master responds. Because I think when you hear the master's response, what you see is that this master isn't actually harsh and doesn't actually reap where they don't sow. That is an excuse that this servant made. Because the first two servants weren't afraid or accused the master of harshness. They just went to go do the bidding of their master. Because the master responds not by saying, yes, I am wicked and harsh. There's a bit of sarcasm in what the master says. But he says, you wicked and lazy slave. You're wicked. You're, you're self-interested. You're not afraid. You're self-interested. And you're not trustworthy. You're lazy with what I've given you. God forbid. You knew, did you, that I reap where I don't sow? And I gather where I don't scatter? Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers. And on my return, I would have received what was my own with interest. And so then it continues. So take the talent away from them and kick them out to the outer darkness where there's weeping and gnashing of teeth. Again, the master is responding by saying, it's not actually fear that is motivating you not to do anything with what I've given you. It's really wicked self-interest and laziness. Pause button. So does that mean that this guy got sent to hell in the parable, that they're kicked out into the outer darkness where there's weeping and gnashing of teeth? No. I believe what Jesus is giving a description of is they're being sent to, to what they chose. They didn't choose light. They didn't choose generosity. They didn't choose trusting that the master would be good to them. This servant chose darkness. They literally chose hiding what God gave them in the ground, what the master gave them in the ground. They chose darkness. And so that's where the master sent them. And the weeping and gnashing of teeth? Think about it. What do you weep over? Sadness. Remorse. Regret. I, I mean, if you've ever regretted something or had remorse over it, you gnash your teeth over it. And I believe that's what Jesus is describing, is that when you choose self-interest, and laziness with what God has given you, you will experience remorse and regret. God forbid. But we're all given resources by God according to our ability. And when we at once choose to bless the world with them, to do all we can with what God has given us, no matter how much, or how little we feel it may be, God will tell us, well done, good and trustworthy. I will put you in charge of even more. Enter into the joy of your master. Beloved, this whole parable is an invitation to know the joy of our master. Think through, what has God given me? What talents? What skills? What resources? And am I using them to my full ability to build up his kingdom? And beloved, I, I'm really proud to say that here at St. Bart's, I see you all doing that in so many ways, that you are good and trustworthy, and I honor you for that. I don't want to give us all a free pass, though, because of that, because we should always be examining how we're doing. I know I need to do that, and that there are times that I am not doing all I can with the abilities God has given me. And that, you know, it's a shame when it happens, but we're always invited to pick up right where we're at and start doing it. Thanks be to God. You are good and trustworthy, St. Bart's. Stay the course. Continue to ask God how you can multiply what he's given you 
so that you can enter into the joy of your master, Jesus. Amen. Beloved, let us confess our faith with the words of the Nicene Creed, saying together, We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. For by the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, He is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. from their distress. 
Give to the departed eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for the needs of our own and for those of others. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And now, in the words our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Praying together. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Almighty God, have mercy on me. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. O God, the author of peace and lover of concord, to know you is eternal life, and to serve you is perfect freedom. Defend us, your humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in your defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries through the might of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Beloved, one of the things that you'll notice is we've been using some different sentences before the offertory the last few weeks and it is a tradition among Episcopalians to have different offertory sentences although your priest usually sticks with the uh, reliable one that we know walk in love but I just wanted to let you know I'm going to be introducing some different offertory sentences uh, each week uh, as we prepare for our offering to God Jesus says in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 5, If you are offering your gift at the altar, and there remember that your brother or sister has something against you, leave your gift there before the altar and go. First, be reconciled to your brother or sister, and then come and offer your gift. Walk in love, as Christ loved us, and gave himself as an offering and a sacrifice to God.
Beloved, let's join our voices together in the prayer attributed to St. Francis of Assisi, praying together, Lord, make us instruments of your peace. Where there is hatred, let us sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is discord, union. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. Grant that we may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen.